I always tell people when they pass Thermo 2, you can expect that you're going to go home on vacation or whatever, spring break or summer. They're going to say, oh, what, what did you learn? What do you study? Mechanical engineering. What classes do you take? Thermodynamics. Tell me a little bit about it. Oh, I learn about power, engines, and gas turbines and refrigeration systems. And somewhere they're going to grab you and say, I've got a problem with my car, or I always wanted to know how the jet engine worked, or I have a problem with my home or my automobile air conditioning system. Come quick and diagnose it for me. It'll happen. Guarantee it. And so here is the air conditioning system in the home. This is a, a manufacturing company located in Houston, Goodman. Uh, they do really good. They're reputable. Uh, it's, they have a large share of the HVAC market out there, and it's located in Houston. Here's the air, outside unit or the condenser, or the condensing unit. Inside, or you have the condensing coils. You have a fan to draw the air from the outside across the condensing coils and then eject upward, typically. And that is rejecting heat to the air outside. You also have the compressor sitting down here making a lot of racket as well as the fan making a lot of racket. So it's noisy and you put it on the back side, hopefully not near your bedroom window. Because it, it heard it when it kicks on. True? Okay. Uh, now they have two lines. One will be refrigerant coming to it. One will be refrigerant going out back. One line typically is larger diameter. One line is smaller diameter. One line is for vapor flow, one line is for liquid flow. And then I ask questions like, which one needs a larger diameter, the vapor or the liquid? And that always throws students for a loop, too. But uh, one is insulated, one is bare. One, if you take the insulation off and touch it, it'll either sense hot or cold. The bare, you touch it, it'll sense hot or cold. Which one and why? You'll be asked all these questions uh, by your cousins, your grandmothers, your whatever. You're, 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 everybody will ask them. Then it goes up, the lines go up to the furnace or to the place where you have another fan to blow air across, basically an evaporator coil. And the evaporator coil, then if for air conditioning, it drops the temperature. Now it's cold air. And you draw that out and throw that into different rooms through some sort of, thank you, supply. In this, inside the house, uh, keep your doorways open or a large gap under them because usually the hallways are the return air. And then you go over to a wall and there'll be a grill in the wall and it'll have a filter and then it goes in, up, and through the furnace. Okay? So you always have a filter somewhere. Or you'll have the filter in the ceiling, and then you just unscrew, bring it down, take the filter, replace it every month or so. So it goes through a filter and then out. So you have basically the evaporator up here, the condenser, condensing coil there. I always encourage you to do this. I do it in Thermo 1. I'm giving you a review. Is cover stuff up when you learn, and then start seeing if you can remember like, oh, what's this little thing hanging on the wall that allows the homeowner to adjust the temperature thermostat, right? Some of them are programmable. Uh, what did they call this? What did they call, you know, this? Uh, what did they call this? Uh, what did they call this? What did they call that? Here's another blow up. So they have a cutaway also of the coil. So that's the condenser coil. Usually it wraps around at least two and a half, three, three and a half sides of your unit. And then here is a compressor. That one looks like a hermetically sealed compressor sitting on little rubber grommets because of the vibration. And you have some other, looks like a, a coil, I mean a, a capacitor and some contacts. The fan draws the air over the coils and expels it out and so you reject heat in the condensing unit. Here's the lines where the coolant or refrigerant flows in and out. Comes up to what we call A coil, pretty standard. Airflow is open here underneath and so it flows up and kind of does a zag across the coil. Why do they not put it flat? Well because when you're in the summer you wring moisture out of the air 
and that moisture has to collect and go somewhere. So by gravity, it'll drain down and there'll be a little catch pan down on both of these sides. And then it catches and goes over to a little drain line. And then that'll drain, typically go to the outside of the house and drip. And somebody's walking around and say, hey, you got a problem in your house because it, it's dripping right here. Where's this water coming from? Drain line off your air conditioning system. Um, the, uh, also, what happens to this if it plugs up? Uh, nasty stuff. So make sure you keep that drain line. They usually pour a little Clorox. If you're at home, do it yourself, or you can do it with Clorox and compress air. Or invite the, the guys out, because HVAC industry, they get lots of calls when it goes over 100, and they get lots of calls when it goes freezing. You know, It's like heating and cooling. And they're bored to death in the spring and fall when it's beautiful weather, right? Your windows are open, the doors are open. That's when they really should be doing service calls and just going around and checking to make sure. And then they'll actually pour some Clorox in or some other cleaner and blow compressed air through. And that way, when it happens and it's 100 degrees and they have 20 calls per hour coming in, um, you, won't have, you won't be that emergency call. Okay, same with the air filter right here. If you don't replace that air filter, what's the consequence? I save $3 per month. Or if it's $8 per filter per month, I'm way ahead. All that lint will collect on this A-coil. And first of all, you can start to smell it because all you need is some lint and some other moisture and boom, you've got growth. You've got growth. And now all those spores that are growing there get carried and distributed all over your house. Oh, great. So you get to breathe mold. Not good, right? But it will collect there. And when it starts to collect so much, it mats up and it blocks the airflow. And you'll feel it in the house. It's like, how come I, I used to get some really good airflow in this room. Now it's, you, prob, you may have blockage on your A-coil. And so what happens is, is they got to come in, they got to pull that unit out, cut the lines, take it out in your backyard and flush it with some good chemicals to get it clean again, and then bring it back in. The other thing what will happen is if it mats up, it'll get so cold in some sections it ices up. And when it starts to ice up, you get ice buildup on your coils. So there's a lot of bad consequences to not having good filters that you repeatedly change out when they start to get full because you really want to protect your A-coils. And then there's the blower, the fan, that, that uh, provides the movement for the air. How about a car? You pop the hood, and you see where's all the air conditioning components in the hood, under the hood. You might want to look for this guy first. Where's the compressor? It's typically driven by a belt off of the serpentine belt somewhere, and you can typically find it, right? Uh, that's a good starting point. Then you look for connections coming to it and going away from it. The one that goes away from it will go to the condensing coil that's typically located before or in front of the radiator. And so the airflow across the radiator will be the same airflow as across the, the condensing coil. Notice they change color in this illustration. Red hot, high pressure. It comes out not so hot, but still warm. Then it goes through a filter dryer because it goes into an expansion valve, which restricts or controls the flow of refrigerant into this coil, which is the evaporator, which is inside the car somewhere, up under the glove box, somewhere where your feet are, typically over in the passenger side. And you'll have a blower motor fan that'll circulate that air, take it, put it over across that coil, and then blow it out the dash or, or up at the window, the defrost, or uh, wherever you have it blowing out in your automobile. How many people have run their AC so far this year even in 2014? Yeah, I did even the other day, just driving home. It's like, hey, turn that air up. <laughs> I'm hot in the back seat. It's February. You should be fine. Turn the air up. I want some cool... All right, so this is a very interesting device. They have a number of them. Here, I'm going to pass this one around. I show students in Thermo 1, but you have 
Two ins and two outs, okay? So this passage through this way, it basically senses the temperature of the refrigerant leaving the evaporator, and it's it, it, there's a bulb right in the middle, okay? That's not to block the flow, but to sense the temperature of the flow going through it. Now, that is nice and big, and it's gas in there, and it helps expand when it's warm and contract when it's cold, and it's connected to a diaphragm, which accentuates the expansion and the contraction, and then it controls a little needle coming down here, and when it expands because it's warm, it lifts the needle, lets more refrigerant go. And when it's too cold, it collapses, pushes the needle down, seats it, and shuts off the flow. So it control, it's a control mechanism. So I'm going to pass that around for you. I'm also going to pass, can you just pass those around, please? So that uh, is a control in, in this system. So the filter dryer is to prevent a little debris from coming up there and plugging it. And guess what? If you ever had an air conditioning system installed in a car, and then all of a sudden it freezes up, the person says, oh, I just have to turn it off and let it defrost for a minute, and then I'll turn it back on and it'll work again. Anybody been in a car like that? Cars have gotten so much better. But uh, what happens is, is it, it freezes right there. It'll build up because you have moisture in there. And so the drier part is to get the moisture out because you don't want it to go and then ice right in your critical passageway and block it. Okay? So that's where you'll ice up uh, in this passage right here. And then it goes back out. Now, this, I like the way they change the color. They change the color so you can see, oh, it's low pressure gas, low pressure liquid, high pressure liquid, high pressure gas. And if anybody ever does any work, typically they put some gauges on, they put two taps, one for high pressure side, measurement, one for the low pressure side measurement, they can diagnose the system. You have typically not enough refrigerant, but sometimes it could be overcharged. You have too much refrigerant in the system. So, so there you go. There is the, an illustration taken off the internet which color codes and ex directions for arrows. I encourage you to go ahead and take a look at home, walk around, see things, as well as pop the hood in a car. Maybe it's a little easier for a car. Do not pop the hood and do anything with the car running, unless you're a pro. Because clothing, hair, rotating machinery, woo, very, very dangerous. True? Be very cautious, rotating machinery.